Pope Francis has said that he thinks of John Paul II as a great missionary of the church. And it, it's, it's ironic to think that popes used to be referred to as prisoners of the Vatican. And here comes John Paul II. And in, in almost 27 years as our Holy Father, he traveled to about 130 different countries, 700,000 miles, the ultimate frequent flyer. What, what drove him to, to, to do that? To... I think the same energy and vision that drove Paul. St. Paul began to move as quickly as he could to the known world of his day. He had to do this on foot or on horseback or in a boat. But why? Because he was driven with the need to tell other people, Christ is risen. This, this is what he said. These are the words of everlasting life. And I think John Paul did the exact same thing. He was driven by the same spirit. From the balcony, when, when he called upon everyone to, to once again embrace Christ, to that mass at the beginning when he said, open wide your hearts to Christ, to all of those trips he took, isn't the message always the same? Jesus loves you. God loves you. He sent you Jesus. All you have to do is love him in return. I remember when he first came, his first visit to the United States in Boston, and there he was at Boston Common, and it had rained, but there were just people everywhere. And I remember sitting with Cardinal Medeiros months later, and he was showing us the, uh, the video uh, of that visit. And here is Pope John Paul saying, God loves you. And all these people are cheering. Jesus loves you. And they're all cheering. And Cardinal Madera said to me, I say that all the time. <laughs> There's something about having the Pope come and remind you that the message that's being proclaimed is true. That is the gospel of Christ. And I think that was what drove him. That's why he went, as you point out, to what, 130 countries? All those thousands and hundreds of thousands of miles because he wanted to confirm the local church. You look at any of the pictures of him in that Pope Mobile, with him is always the local bishop. The local bishop is head of that local church, teacher of that church. The pope comes as universal teacher, as head of the universal church, to confirm his brother in the role of guiding God's people. I think that's what drove him. And all of our recent popes have emphasized the importance of evangelization, and recently we've been calling it the new evangelization. Considering what you've just spelled out, would you say that John Paul II could be seen as a patron saint of the new evangelization, this effort underway in the Church Universal? I think that would be a very apt uh, designation if we were looking for some subtitle. I think it should be St. John Paul II, St. John Paul the Great, but he is the patron saint of the new evangelization. He's the one that envisioned this not a new proclamation, not a new gospel. People have been evangelized, but a representation of it that was fresh, that had energy behind it, that was new in its expression, its method, its ardor. Those, those are the terms he used. Yep. He, and he introduced this uh, at a time when I'm not sure most of the world and certainly most of the church was was having the same insight. He began all those years ago by recognizing how the secular hegemony was diminishing the understanding and impact of faith. And so he kept calling us, renew the faith, spread the faith, 
confident in the faith. And that's what the evangelization is all about.